A smoke signal? Thoughts, you giddy? In former times, such signals were used to announce the coming of an emissary of peace. In Doma, at least. But could that truly be their intent? Who can say? Whatever they want, we cannot simply blast them out of the sky. Not when they were so gracious as to honor one of our cherished traditions. I would not have it said that we Dolmans want for propriety. Then I shall go and reconnoiter. Nay, that won't be necessary. We will meet them openly. I would welcome this student of Dolman history in person. Whomsoever he or she may be. As you wish, my lord. I shall arrange for a signal of our own to be fired in answer. We should be received by the Lord of Dorma himself. I but afford an emissary of peace, the courtesy he is due. Welcome to Dorma, my lord. Ah, where are my manners? I am Asahi Sas Brutus, ambassador plenipotentiary of Garlemont. He is heir to the Nai-Uri clan, and Yotsu's stepbrother. It seems I need not introduce myself, not in the presence of the famed Yugiri Mistwalker. Your skills as a shinobi are known far and wide, my lady. It is true, the former acting viceroy is my sister, yet Bonds of kinship aside, we have precious little in common. As will soon become plain, I come not to sow strife, but to end it. I am of the Populares, a collective which represents the interests of the common man. Long have we labored to bring about reform to the Empire's provincial policy. Happily for us, our master acknowledges the need for change. Indeed, his radiance, Emperor Varis Zos Galvus, personally sanctioned this mission, granting me the authority to speak with his voice. To negotiate peace with Dorma. Well then, we have much to discuss. Will you accompany me to my hall? Gladly, my lord. On behalf of my delegation, I offer you my humblest thanks. Never did I imagine that I would meet the gallant and noble Lord of Dorma himself, nor be welcomed into his magnificent hall. You'll forgive me if we forgo the pleasantries. You say you are come to negotiate peace. Unless I am mistaken. Such negotiations are typically conducted between sovereign nations. I was not aware that the Emperor had recognized Doma's sovereignty. 
His radiance has yet to do so, that much is true. Know, however, that he has expressed willingness to cede Doma to her ancestral masters and treat with her as a friend. Since the days of Emperor Solus, the Empire has aggressively expanded its territory. While you may not agree with our Founding Father's policy of expansion, I believe there is room for discussion on the matter of his lifelong goal, to rid the world of icons. Icons are a blight upon this star. They cannot be suffered to exist. This you know as well as we. In his wisdom, Emperor Varus wishes to explore the possibility of an alliance to combat this common threat. On the condition that Dorma renounces summoning and pledges to police the Corjin's practice of it, his radiance would extend the hand of friendship. Doma has never shown any appetite for summoning, and it should go without saying that we will address any threat to our people, Icon or otherwise. With regard to the Kojin, I must stress that they only resorted to summoning under extreme provocation. When the Ruby Sea was at peace and their sacred relics safe, they looked not to their Kami for protection. Yet even now there are certain parties who would destabilize the region with ill-conceived military forays. Unless they alter their course, we cannot hope to be rid of icons. Quite. I can but apologize. In seeking to eliminate icons, the Empire creates them. Tis an irony among ironies, one with which the people of Eorzea are well acquainted, I am told. Indeed, many summonings are the result of persecution, the weak being driven to call upon the divine for deliverance from the strong. So it was in Alamigo, the bitter fruit of Garlian oppression. A tragic state of affairs. If we are to put an end to summoning once and for all, it shall not be through might, but harmony. Yet we continue to repeat our mistakes, oblivious to the lessons of history. My comrades and I would change all that. We, Populares, have campaigned long and hard for a shift in imperial policy. And at last, the Emperor has seen fit to lend us an ear. Alas, there is a faction within Garlemald that would obstruct our every attempt at reform. A collection of pure-blooded Garlians who seek to consolidate their own supremacy. The Optimates. Lest you wonder, Theirs was the hand that loosed our forces on the Confederacy. T'was a regrettable incident, one that flies in the face of everything we believe. And I swear to do all in my power to prevent a reoccurrence. That would be most welcome. But if I may speak plain, if the Empire itself is not of one mind, how can we be certain that any peace we negotiate will be honoured? I cannot blame you for doubting us. Indeed, I should find it strange if you did not. And so, in the name of building trust, I would like to make a proposal. A prisoner exchange. Hmm. Under Garlian rule, no few Dormans were conscripted into the Imperial Army. We would repatriate them in return for those of ours you captured in the recent conflict. Naturally, any exchange would include the acting Viceroy. Yotsugo? 
What makes you think we have her? Forgive me, my lord. Was it not your wish to speak plain? Let us not play games. I desire only to work to our mutual benefit. The Optimates tried and failed to take my sister by force. I would succeed by peaceable means, thereby strengthening my party's hand. It would be a lie to say I would not also be glad of my sister's safe return. Hmm. A fellow plain speaker. How refreshing. Very well. Your proposal has merit, but I will need time to consider it. Of course, my lord. May we remain in Dorma until you have come to a decision? You shall be our honored guests. Yugiri, I leave the ambassador and his retinue in your care. See that they are well looked after. You have our gratitude, Lord Hien. We shall look forward to your answer. Trouble. Are you all right? Hi. What do they want with you? Yuki! And you lot too! I, I, I don't know. We were returning from the Enclave when they came at us. It seems they won't go quietly. And neither will we. It is nothing.
The art of my forebears. That seems to be the last of them. You have nothing to fear, child. You are safe now. Thank you, sir. You saved us again. Thank you. If you're ever passing by our village, look us up. You'll always be welcome. Thank goodness we arrived when we did. Indeed. But what could have prompted the Red Coden to stray so far from the Ruby Sea? I presume these are the cell swords hired by Yotsu. If so, the answer is simple. Desperation. Bereft of Imperial employment, they seek other means to line their coin purses. Another sad legacy of the Empire's mismanagement. The Empire to which you have sworn allegiance. Must you always be so pointed? If we are to bring about lasting change, we must look beyond narrow allegiances. You have every right to doubt me, but in time, I hope you will come to see that we share a common goal. You and yours have fought fiercely to change the Empire from without, but if we are to end the cycle of conflict, the Empire must change from within. Am I wrong? Never? I wonder, would you have said the same of Ishgard? Believe what you will, but I assure you, 
the empire can change. I had her brought here in secret while the three of you kept our guest company.
The world has not been kind to you, it is true. But that does not excuse your sins. You should be at the bottom of the river. Yet here you are, the living, breathing proof of my failure. A failure for which I would now make amends. What, what did I do? I don't remember. Was it really so terrible? Tell me, please! What did I do? You speak of sins, my lord. But at whose feet do those sins lie? Were the soldiers who committed the crimes, or those who commanded them to do so? With both, I would say. For all have a conscience, and all must choose. But with no memory of who she is, or what she has done, what sin remains to be cleansed? You ask that I show mercy? I ask why the heavens saw fit to deny me my rest. Why Yotsuyu was spared not only death, but the bitter memories of her life. You truly think it the will of the Kami? If so, her life is not mine to take. It is yours to safeguard. Come the hour of the exchange, if her memories have not returned, she may remain here in Doma to live out her days as Tsuyu. But if they do, the Garleans shall have their Viceroy. Though the people will protest, they will come to accept my decision when they have been reunited with their loved ones. Thank you, my lord. Now then, I believe we have kept our guests waiting long enough. Did Gorsetsu not seem strange to you? His sympathy for Yotsuyu apart, I mean. I know his powers of endurance only too well, but after all he has suffered, even he should not be on his feet. He puts on a brave face for our sakes, but it would not surprise me if he lacked the strength to raise his blade. Though I suppose if he and Yotsu are to enjoy a life of peace and quiet, he will have little use for it. It falls to us to shape that future, one in which he need never again set foot on the battlefield.